Now the second factor affecting uh, timing advance is mixture density. Mixture density is typically measured by the CARS ECU using RPM, flow sensors, and temperature sensors. But for this example, we're going to measure it in terms of volumetric efficiency since we can calculate volumetric efficiency using the power calculator. As the mixture increases in density, then so does the number of air and fuel molecules available for the flame front to expand outwards. This denser mixture allows the flame front to travel faster and is typically the case with forced induction engines such as turbocharged and supercharged vehicles that cram more air and fuel into the cylinder. If we leave this mixture alone at stock timing, then the air-fuel mixture will out-accelerate the piston and catch it before tucked at center, which slows down the engine rotation and exerts power rather than making it. So as the mixture density increases, we retard timing to once again catch the piston just as it crosses top dead center. As the mixture density decreases, we advance timing to prevent the piston from outrunning the now slower moving and less dense mixture. Of course, there are other things that affect the flame front travel speed besides mixture density, such as octane rating, higher octane fuels burn slower, the presence of burn accelerants, such as nitrous oxide, or oxygenated alcoholic fuels like ethanol and methanol, or the presence of flame retardants, such as water injection and high humidity. Now that we have a basic understanding of timing curves, let me show you some simulated timing curves based on the 5.7 liter LS1 engine. If you look here, then I have a dynograph of a normally aspirated LS1 5.7 liter engine and a centrifugally supercharged engine that builds boost and power more and more as we go up in the RPM ranges. I also have another dyno of a nitrous injected uh, LS1 with a 100 horsepower shot and I used all three dynos to create the simulation that I'm about to show you. Now this is the Excel sheet where I did all these calculations. As you can see here I have my RPMs and then here I have base timing, mechanical advance which is RPM dependent and then I have uh, horsepower which I read off of the dyno for naturally aspirated nitrous and centrifugal setups volumetric efficiency calculated using the power calculator here, here, and here and then volumetric efficiency advance, which I calculated based on these volumetric efficiency numbers, and this is my total timing for each setup. Now this is a simulation just to explain how things are working. First thing I want to show you is if we take an example here, the naturally aspirated version of this motor is making 260 horsepower at 4,000 RPMs. Now if I go into my power calculator, and I go into my inputs, it's a 5.7 liter 8-cylinder engine, and like I just said, it's making 260 horsepower at 4,000 RPMs. Let's calculate that. I'll take a second to return the results. Alright, so now my results are ready. I'm just going to click here and scroll up. You can see my stock engine volumetric efficiency is about 105 percent at 4,000 RPMs, making 260 horsepower. Go back here and I plug in that number here, volumetric efficiency, 105 percent, and I repeat that for all these cells here, all these different points which I read off my dyno, and all these points here which I also read off the other dyno, and over here which I read off the other dyno. Okay, so these are all numbers you can get from a dynograph of your engine if you go visit a dyno tuner and you just take a, and you do a, a dyno pull of your car, you can get these numbers and you can do this calculation. Now if I go down here, you can see a number of different timing curves. This is my base timing, 5 degrees before top dead center. This is enough to get the car to idle. This is my RPM base timing or my mechanical timing. And then on here I see three different curves. One for my naturally aspirated bolt-on engine, one for uh, the, nitrous, uh, the nitrous injected example, 100 horsepower shot of nitrous and one for a supercharger peaking out at about uh, 9 psi towards redline 